So with the next questions, right, or whatever else we're gonna work out in this sketch, the one thing that can somewhat be guaranteed is the fact that we're gonna definitely make use of everything we spoke about. So let's see here. Let me do this. Let's see here. What is this? We're looking at 10 point what? 10.2.2. They're asking us to prove with reasons that AF ED is a cyclic quadrilateral. I'm literally just closing the windows here and the doors because I don't know who the baby is crying outside. But anyways, let's see here. I don't know if you could hear it though. No, I couldn't. Uh, you missed out. You missed out, sir. You missed out. You missed out on the reason why people should not have babies. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, others others can. I mean, let me not be a hater. Anyways, don't, so it says here. Pardon? Don't be a hater, bro. Hey, I'm not being a hater, guy. I'm just like, if you're gonna have a baby, I just control it, you know. Yeah. Don't don't, yeah. don't let it make noise for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> don't make us. It seems like we're evil now. You know, be like, hey, keep your baby quiet. Be like, ah, you just saying that because you don't have a baby, duh. Because I don't want to deal with those problems. But anyways, <laughs> let's 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 deal with what we have to deal with. So okay. they want us to prove that this is a cyclic quadrilateral for four marks. Now, proving a cyclic quad, there are three reasons. Three reasons forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's in grade twelve. Let's just add that. So with D E D F E D F E D, no A F E D. Where is A F E D? There's A F. No, no, no. A F E D is this small space here. Let me even highlight it in like red or something. Because I see. why not? A F uh, E D. They want us to prove that this is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, anytime you need to prove a cyclic quadrilateral, um, there are just three ways to do it. Like literally three ways to do it. I'll draw three sketches to try and... Uh, okay, so the first way is to prove that angles that are subtended by the same chord or arc, they're equal. You're gonna, you want to prove something like this, where this is equal to that. If you can do that, you would have proven that these four points here are four points of the cyclic quadrilateral. Now, normally your shape would obviously have uh, something like this here, something like that. As, you can, as long as you can prove that this is equal to this or this is equal to this, it doesn't matter. You will be fine in terms of proving a cyclic quad, right? That's just like one way to do it. Secondly, if you can prove that opposite sides add up to like, 180. So if you can prove that op opposite sides add up to 180, that's another way of proving cyclic quadrilaterals. The third and final way is to look for an exterior angle in your shape. So you have a four-sided shape, right? And then you need to look out for an opposite exterior angle. You need to prove that this exterior angle out here is equal to an opposite interior one. It doesn't matter which one is the exterior angle. It could be this one here. You just need to prove that it is equal to that one over there. You see, that's like the third way to do it. Now, this is not to say all three work for all, all sketches. Nope, you have to choose one sometimes. Sometimes two work, but sometimes usually there's a specific one that works based on your sketch. So in this sketch, we can see there are some zigzag lines here. So we might as well try to exploit that a bit because you can see this, this line here in our um, quadrilateral is crisscrossing this line here. So already we could be thinking to ourselves, okay, fine, we could try and prove that this angle is equal to that one, or this angle is equal to that one. If we can do that, we would have also proven that we're dealing with the cyclic quadrilateral. Furthermore, we only have like one exterior angle here, which is this one, you see. Let me maybe make it in, in, in red, this one. So if we extend this line a bit, right, what we're seeing is we have this exterior angle here, which is gonna, which is like E1. If you can prove that E1, this tiny angle there, is equal to this whole opposite interior angle over there, that's another way to prove that you're dealing with a cyclic quadrilateral. And then lastly, if we can, for some odd reason, prove that the opposite angles are adding up to 180, that will be that'll be the third way. So for four marks, 
I mean, just looking at it nicely, I mean, like the way these, the way this sketch is set up, yeah, it may look as though the, the crisscross way is most probably what's going to bail us out. The others, yeah, they do seem a bit strange. And I might as well also just double check A F E D. A F E D. So, yeah, this does not necessarily look like the straightforward one. But normally, what I do is if you're going to prove that, like, um, what you may call angles are equal and all that. So firstly, we have proven that, uh, let's, let's just look at what we did in, in 10 point 2 point 1. So we proved that this is 2x, and we have proven that this is x, right? Okay, fine, that's all we have. Furthermore, uh, I mean, like, we do know that this is x. I just don't know if that is going to be useful to us. But let's see, let's see. This is x also. It doesn't look like it's really contributing much, to be honest. Um, so let's see, F2 and A3, we need to prove that either these are equal or E2 and D1. So normally, depending on what you want to prove to be equal, the one thing I always say is don't focus directly on the angles you're trying to show are equal. What you may want to do is find something equal to this one individually, and then find something equal to this one individually. Or we may have to find something equal to F2, and then find something equal to like, um, the A3, and then try to see if they are both equal to the same thing. Now, the only problem is with something like A3, our sketch is just so plain. There is really not anything else that is equal to A3 that we can clearly see. Or rather, the one thing we can be thinking of is angle A3 is like going to C and also like going to D. So we would maybe be looking for another angle that is also subtended by the arc or the chord uh, DC, and we don't see it. This angle here is subtended by DC, but that's that's really not gonna be useful for us. So the A3, finding something equal to A3, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's happening. Yeah. With, 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 let's say E2, right? With E2, it almost seems like the same issue. E is going to F, E is going to A, so we need to look for another angle subtended by, um, what you call AF, and that's D1, yes, but then we cannot say that they're equal to each other on that basis because we are trying to prove it's a cyclic quad. So we cannot say, uh, we cannot prove, we cannot use what we're trying to prove to prove what we're trying to prove. You see, we, it's not a cyclic quad yet until we have proven it. We know they're equal, but we cannot say they're equal directly. We need to find something equal to this one on its own, find something equal to this one on its own. So with, with D though, it looks as though with, um, well with D, because these lines are like red eye, with D1, we know it's equal to this whole angle here, which is uh, nice, but then it really is gonna be a mission for us to show that E2 is equal to that whole angle over there. That's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a mission. Mm -hmm. So we might as well also almost like um, forget that way of thinking. So the whole, um, what you may call, exterior angle of a cyclic quad, that is what we seem to be left with, right? We have here, um, what you may call, E1. We need to find a way of showing that it is equal to, uh, a2 and A3. And quite frankly, yeah, it doesn't seem like that's just gonna happen overnight. This this is clearly, honestly speaking, yeah, it's not a very straightforward question. It doesn't look very simple. It yeah. it looks, yeah, it doesn't look nice. Like it just doesn't look nice at all. But but I mean it it let me see here. The, I think the other pair we're forgetting is this one. We focused on E2 and D2. And then we focused on F2 and A3, but we didn't focus on, uh, for example, A2 and D2. If we can prove that these are equal, it will also work. Or we can also prove that F2 is equal to E3. Because if you look at F2 and E3, they are also doing the whole crisscross thing. Where there's F here, there's A here, right? There's F here, yeah. and then there's D over here. Furthermore, there's like an E here. This E3 is going to A. 
and it is also going to be see so we have another set of angles we can also use for our cause and it looks as though these ones are going to be a bit more promising the reason why i say these are a bit more promising is because with f1 at least we have something already so if we can just show that e3 is also equal to like 2x then we're good to go now the fortunate thing is if you look at where e3 is right this is where like you know having to have gone through like different questions and all that really comes to play because if you look at this small triangle here right e let me draw it like this with an extension here ed here with c up there right there is c here there is d here if you look nicely this is x this is x and then there is e3 here right what we can already see is that this is an exterior angle of this triangle and what we know is that there's a law that says that an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior one. So that's already a gateway to say that this is equal to 2x. And then as long as this is equal to 2x and this is equal to 2x, you have two angles that are subtended by the same chord that are equal to each other. So that would be our way to say that we're dealing with the cyclic quadrilateral. You see? So let's, let's go that route clearly because that's the only route that's working. So here we can firstly tell them that D3 is equal to X, which is equal to C uh, because of, you know, base angles of an isosceles triangle. So we can say that first. So D3 is equal to angle um, C there, which is also equal to X. The reason for us writing out what we have just written out is, is base angles of N, Isosceles. I don't know. I spell isosceles, so I might as well just say isos triangle. You see. Now we have stated that this is also equal to x, right? So from this, these two being x, we can then say three e three is equal to d three plus c, right? The reason is exterior angle of a triangle so here as a conclusion we can say therefore e3 is equal to x plus x which is equal to like 2x and then there's your e3 here there you go so now we are home free because back then here we have been we, we have already shown that this is equal to 2x now we've also shown that this is equal to 2x now its significance is to help us work this out because now as long as we know that those are equal we are basically making use of this law to tell us that we're dealing with a cyclic quadrilateral. Because I think when when I um when I drew this out, in as much as this is gonna be equal to this, uh, what did I really miss from from this one? Yeah, I think with this one, the one mistake I had made was to also not just to forget that. Okay, wait a minute, this can be equal to that one. That's one way to also show it. And then also this is equal to that one. That's another way to show it. I don't know why I only focused on these two and these two. That's why I think uh, our thinking was clouded in terms of just thinking of this and this and this and this and forgetting that, okay, this and this can also work or this and that can also work. So with the E3 now, we can then say, therefore, E3 is equal to F1, which are both equal to 2X. Uh, that's been proven now. So here we can say, therefore, uh, D, F, E, I mean, A, F, E, D, A, F, E, D is a cyclic quad because um, angles in the same segment are equal. You see, we proved that those angles are equal to each other without using the angles in the same segment law. So yeah. if we can do that, you are trying to say that, yes, a circle can be drawn around those four points since those angles are equal to each other. And that is going to be worth four marks, of which over time, the more questions like this you do, it somewhat does get a little bit easier. 